This video tutorial is intended for students who are currently enrolled in or have already taken ETEC 322 Intro to CNC Machining at Western Washington University. It should be used as a supplement or a refresher to the instruction given in that course. In addition, students must be authorized to enter the Metal Machining Lab and be supervised by an instructor when operating the machines and tools discussed in this tutorial. In this tutorial, we will be demonstrating how to properly set up and load the different types of cutting tools used in the Haas BF2 series CNC machine. The purpose of this process is to prepare the CNC for your specific machining operations. You will be shown where the tools are located, how to assemble the necessary components, and how to load them into the CNC machine. The Metal Machining Lab is located on the first floor of the Ross Engineering Technology Building in room 136. Before beginning, remember that safety glasses are required in all Western Washington University ETEC labs. All tools required to complete your lab should be in the red cabinets located beside your CNC machine. It is a good idea to collect all needed components on the tool tray provided to each CNC machine for safe transport to the tool assembly station. Inspect all tools when selecting them to ensure they are not damaged. We will be assembling the 1 inch end mill, but the process is the same for other end mill sizes. To assemble the 1 inch end mill, you will need a 1 inch end mill, an end mill holder, number 8 allen wrench, and leather gloves. First put the leather gloves on. End mills are sharp and can be a severe hazard. Place the end mill holder face up in the holding station, making sure that the slot in the body fits over the boss on the holding station. Insert the end mill into the body. Make sure that the set screw on the holder makes contact with one of the two flat surfaces on the end mill. The top flat surface is preferred to prevent tool deflection, but in circumstances where additional tool length is needed, the bottom flat can be used. When tightening the set screw, think about where your hand would go if it slipped. To avoid injury with the cutting tool, it is generally best to push down and away from the flutes. The process of assembling a center drill is similar for all center drill sizes used in ETEC 322. You will need a center drill, appropriate sized collet, a collet retainer, a holder body, and a spanner wrench. It is critical to get the correct order of assembly for the center drill. The collet is inserted from the back of the collet retainer. Make sure you hear it snap into place. The center drill can then be inserted into the collet. It is important that the bit fits snugly in the collet before it is tightened, otherwise it will not have adequate holding power during machining. Tighten the collet retainer ring using the spanner wrench. It should be tight, but avoid over tightening as this can damage the tools. To assemble the drill chuck, you will need a drill chuck and a drill bit. Insert the drill bit into the chuck and hand tighten. Drill chucks should only be used for tools engaging the workpiece axially or in the Z direction. Otherwise, the tool can become loose in the chuck as drill chucks are not designed to withstand biaxial forces. Now that you have assembled the needed tools, they must be loaded into the CNC machine. To do this, hold the tool in the left hand, making sure the groove fits directly over the boss on the CNC turret. Push the tool lightly upwards in the open tool position. Push the button located on the right side of the turret until the tool is attached. You are now ready to set the tool height offset for each of your tools. Once you have completed your milling operations, 
and are done with the CNC machine, make sure that all tools are replaced to their correct locations and that your work area is clean before you leave the lab.